Hello, this video covers section 9.6 from your textbook and in this section I'm going to introduce to you the concept of complex numbers. We're going to learn how to perform operations on complex numbers, but most importantly this idea of complex numbers is that numbers can be broken up into two parts. There's a real part and there's an imaginary part. And Up till this point you've only talked about real numbers, but there do that there does exist imaginary numbers and so you might remember back to when we at the beginning of this section we talked about radicals and square roots and we said that we couldn't take the square root of a negative number actually if I gave you a problem like that if I said for example what's the square root of negative 25 what did we write you remember we said it was not real well, it's not real, it is imaginary. And so, in order to talk about imaginary numbers, we need to introduce what we call the imaginary unit. And the letter we use to represent that is the letter i. And we are going to define the letter i as the square root of negative 1. Now, if we square both sides of that definition, then i becomes i squared. And, the, and we know that if we square the square root of negative 1, the square root goes away and we just get negative 1. So two important definitions here. i is equal to the square root of negative 1, which means i squared is equal to negative 1. Now the reason why this is so powerful is it allows us to deal with imaginary numbers or negative numbers, or square roots of negatives. Excuse me. So kind of what we can think about the way we can use this is suppose we have the square root of negative 25. Well, it might be worthwhile to think of this as factored into negative 1 times 25. In which case, we know the square root of negative 1, we just talked about it, is i. And the square root of 25 is 5. So the square root of negative 25 is 5i. If we take a look at the next one and forget about the fact that there's a negative out front and we just deal with the square root of negative 9. Well, the square root of negative 9, just like in that last one, the square root of negative 25 is 5i. Well, the square root of negative 9 is 3i. And then because of that negative out front, it's a negative 3i. And that's basically how we can find the square root of negative numbers. So now that we've talked about imaginary numbers, we can now talk about what is a complex number. The set of complex numbers includes the set of all imaginary numbers and the set of all real numbers. So a complex number is a number that can be written in the form a plus b i. This is a definition where a is the real part and b is the imaginary part. So any complex number has a real part and an imaginary part. So if I want to talk about some different operations, like adding and subtracting, if we have complex numbers, we can only add the real parts together, and we can only add the imaginary parts together. It's kind of like, if you will, like terms. You can think like terms. So I can only add the real parts, the numbers, the 5 plus 3. If I'm adding two com complex numbers, I add the 5 plus 3 and I get 8. And then I can add the imaginary parts, the i parts. So we have a positive 3 and a negative 7 makes a negative 4i. 
Notice I add a complex number to a complex number and I get a complex number. My result has a real part and an imaginary part. I could also talk about subtracting complex numbers. What do you think we have to do here? I hope you said to yourself you have to distribute the negative first. That's probably the best way to think about this. So if we distribute the negative, this becomes 4 plus 5i plus 2 and minus 4i. This negative 2 changes to a positive 2 and the positive 4 changes to a negative 4i. And then again we just add the real parts. 4 plus 2 equals 6 and 5i minus 4i equals 1i or just i. So again when we subtract two complex numbers we get a complex number. And so this is the main note here that you want to remember in this section. To add and subtract complex numbers, we combine the real parts and combine the imaginary parts. It's just like adding like terms. We can also talk about multiplying complex numbers. If I had 8i times 15i, well, 8 times 15 is 120. And i times i, it's just like if we multiplied x times x, i times i is i squared. Now do you remember what i squared is? Go back up to the top where we defined i. We said the i squared was equal to negative 1. So I can simplify 120 times i squared because this is 120 times negative one, or it's equal to negative 120. Okay, we could also talk about taking the square root of negative 21 times the square root of negative 3. We know that anytime we have the square root of a negative, we have an i, and so this becomes i times the square root of 21 we pull that negative out and then the second one becomes i times positive square root 3 or square root of positive 3 if we pull that negative out then we can multiply i times i is i squared and the square root of 21 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 63 and anytime you're working with radicals, you always want to ask yourself, is there any perfect squares that I can take out of the 63? So I want to factor that. 63 is what? What do we have? We have 9 times 7. And 9 is 3 times 3. So this can be thought of as 63 is 3 squared times 7. So I could pull out a 3 here. And remember what i squared is. i squared is negative 1. So it's a negative. That 3 squared gets pulled out and becomes a 3. And what's left inside is the 7. So this simplifies to negative 3 square root of 7. Now when we're multiplying we also might have some examples that look like this. We're just getting used here to working with complex numbers. What do you think we do with example C? If you were thinking distribute, you would be correct. So with this one, we would have 3i times 2, which gives us 6i. And 3i times 7i is a positive 21i squared. Remember, i squared equals negative 1, 
So this is really 6i, 21 times negative 1 is negative 21. And I'm going to go ahead and write this in the other order, negative 21 plus 6i. The reason why I'm doing that is in complex number form, a plus bi, it's usually the real part, the negative 21 that comes first, and then the imaginary part, the 6i. Okay, what do you suppose we do with example D? If you said to yourself FOIL, you would be correct. We would want to FOIL here. In which case, we would have 5 times 5 is 25. And we have 5 times negative 2i is negative 10i. And we have 2i times 5i is a positive 10i. And lastly, we have 2i times negative 2i is negative 4i squared. Notice our two middle terms here, because this was a difference of squares, they will cancel. And so we're left with 25i squared is negative 1. So this is negative 4 times negative 1, which is a positive 4, which equals a positive 29. If you miss that, again real quick, this is equal to negative 4 times negative 1, which equals positive 4. Alright, so that is multiplying complex numbers. Now in our last example, example D, we multiplied, we said those were um, a difference of squares. And we also have called these sorts of expressions conjugates, where they're the exact same expression, except instead of a positive, we have a negative. And when we're doing that with complex numbers, we call them complex conjugates. So my question is, what is always the result of multiplying two complex conjugates? Well, if you look at this last example we got, it results in having no imaginary part. We just have a real number. Now the last operation we're going to talk about in this section is the process of dividing complex numbers. And when we have a binomial in the denominator, or like example B, we are going to do a process that is similar to rationalizing the denominator. But first let's talk about an easier one. So if I divide, if I take 2 and divide it by i, the easiest way to simplify this is to multiply the top and bottom times i. Because what this gives us is 2 times i, 2i on the top, and i times i, i squared in the denominator. Of course, i squared is negative 1, so this is 2i divided by negative 1. And any th time we divide by negative 1, it just makes the whole term negative. So this is a negative 2i. And I didn't actually follow the directions here completely. Notice in the directions I said write your answer in a plus bi form and my answer here only has a imaginary part the real part is 0 so if we write in a plus bi form we would say 0 minus 2i now that one is not that bad the next one requires a little bit more work and this is where we do the process that's similar to the <clears throat> rationalizing the denominator. We want to multiply the top and bottom by not the conjugate, but the complex conjugate. 2 plus i. 2 plus i. And when we do that, we're going to FOIL all over the place. We're going to FOIL on the top, we're going to FOIL on the bottom. The top becomes 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times i plus 3i, then a plus 2i, and then a plus i squared, 
on the bottom we have a 4 plus 2i minus 2i minus i squared. And notice because these are complex conjugates, the imaginary parts disappear. And if you want, if you get good at this, you get in the habit of just not even writing that part because we know it's going to disappear. So on the top we have 6 plus 5i, combine the two i imaginary terms, i squared is negative 1 over 4 minus i squared, but i squared is again negative 1. Now this bottom down here changes to 4 plus 1, we have the double negative rule. And so this problem becomes 6 minus 1 is 5 plus 5i over 5. 4 plus 1 is 5. Which still quite isn't in a plus bi form. Let's go ahead and take and divide the real part by 5 because our denominator is 5. And the imaginary part. The 5i. Let's divide that by 5. Which gives us 1 plus I. So when we divide 3 plus i divided by 2 minus i, the result is 1 plus i. Again, it's a complex number. All right, so now you should have enough information to go look at the self-check questions for section 9.6. These are all the type of problems that we talked about. Thanks, and we'll see you in class.